Hello everyone, my name is Ahmad Junaid and in this video I want to show you the layer painter add-on for Blender. This add-on fills a very important gap in Blender's texture painting system which is a complete layer management solution. In fact, it enables Blender to become a complete PBR texture painting application. And just last week, the developer released the new version 1.2 which has a much better UI, lot of new features and uh, a number of bug fixes as well. If you like this add-on, you can get it on Blender Market for 25% off. This is a part of their spring sale which lasts only for this week. You will find the link in the description below. So let's start. So as soon as you install the add-on, it will give you a quick tip on how to use it. Here are some basic settings for this add-on and a key map for some functionality that this add-on has and a panel to further customize this add-on so you can add some your own node groups and your own textures which this add-on will use to give you more functionality so it's very customizable so let's get right into it so you can enable this add-on by going to the material tab and clicking on layer painter and as soon as you click it it will notice that you haven't used it before and then it will ask you if you want to see the tutorial. This tutorial is really great. You can follow it to learn about the basic interface and the functionality of this add-on. I haven't seen the same approach for any other add-on developers. So a big thumbs up to the developer for providing this. So to get started, press new and Layer Painter will ask you to reset this material because it needs to set it up to be used with different layers. So reset it and then you get into the basic interface for layer painter. It also comes with a very nice helpful menu which you access by pressing control and right click. And here you have some basic settings uh, like the resolution for your textures and the basic color with which uh, a new texture is added, extension for the textures and auto toggle painting which means that it will automatically switch to texture painting if you have it uh, enabled previously. It also has some settings for the viewport which are to quickly change the HDRI and to turn on ambient occlusion, bloom or screen space reflection. It also has some workspace specific settings like add a workspace specifically for layer painter which is optimized for the layer painting workflow. Uh, open the 2D editor, reset the 3D view to default uh, settings and a, with these two buttons you can uh, set up the layer painter to work the best for the cycles or the EV render engine and set 0 and set 1 is the visibility setting for your HDRI. So I will add a workspace for layer painter now. A very helpful shortcut that layer painter has is to rotate the HDRI. So you press shift right click and drag your mouse and it will rotate the HDRI. If you have any pre-baked maps for your object you can select them here. Right now it only supports these three types of maps. So I have some maps baked for my object here. So I will quickly select them. Now let's add our first layer. I will rename it rubber. And here you can see the basic settings for this layer. In this first panel, you can add more channel to this layer. So these are the basic PPR channels. The second panel is used for masks, which control the visibility of your layer. In filters, you can add a filter to your layer and you can also add some vector effects to your layer. For now, I will just work with the diffuse channel. And here down below, you can select a color for your diffuse or you can add a texture to it if you have one or you can paint it. I will just use a solid color and let's make it a bit dark. So this layer represents the rubber part of the tire. So to make it so that it affects only the rubber part of the tire, let's add a mask to it and I will use a color ID mask. So let's add a color ID mask from here. So it will use the color ID map that I added earlier in the base textures for masking. So let's quickly open the 2D editor from the shortcut menu. And this is the color ID map. 
and it should be the red color for the rubber and it works perfectly I also want to add some bump to give it a more rubber like appearance so let's go to layer and add a height channel but I want the bump to affect only the height channel so let's select the channel from the top menu here and whatever masks I apply now will only be applied to this selected channel here so let's add a noise mask now so I don't see any effect for now I can quickly view just the mask uh, from this layer so I need to scale it a little bit to make it smaller let's make it 500 so let's turn off the mask view and to view the effects of the noise map let's turn this height slider up a little bit now I want to use the same mask for the roughness channel but right now I cannot copy the masks between different channels but there is one simple trick that I can use to accomplish this so I can click this button to bake my mask into a single texture which can be used then with other channels as well and this is also very helpful in performance especially if you have uh, many different kind of masks so the calculation required will cause the shading to slow down a bit so this baking will help you run your viewport in a smooth manner so now the texture is baked and it's already selected so let's select it now for the roughness channel as well add the roughness channel select it go to masks add a texture and just select the same texture here and the same texture is now added for your roughness as well and you can change intensity of roughness from this slider now let's add a new layer for the metal part of the tire with these buttons you can select which layer you want to work on first set up the ID mask for this layer now I want to add a metallic channel for this layer and let's increase the metalness Perfect. It also has a group layer functionality for better organization. So let's add it. Name it metal and add the metal layer in this group by pressing this up arrow. Add a new layer in this group called scratches. And I want to add some scratches to the metal rim. So it already has a lot of cool masks that you can use and I want to use the scratches mask here and let's see how it looks like so maybe decrease the size a little bit decrease the distortion too and it looks okay so these masks are just uh, node groups from the shader editor and if you want you can also add your own by going to the layer painter settings in the custom tab you can select masks and add your own to limit these scratches so they just appear on the edges of the rim I will add a texture which I will use to control it and I will use a pre-baked texture for this rim and if I turn off the scratches and turn on the mask view and I can play with the settings here a little bit to get the effect that I want so 
and let's turn on scratches now and the scratches are now only visible on the edges and here is the blend mode that you can see how the two textures are mixed together I will leave it at multiply and to see the effect of the scratches now turn off the mask view go back to layer and change the height and the scratches appear now and for every channel you can use a solid color or a texture or you can paint something so let's add a new layer so click on the brush click OK and this will automatically switch to the texture painting mode select a color and you can start painting So you can see that you can add more details with this function. You can also use texture painting with masks. So let's go to the scratches layer and then let's try to add more details to the scratches. Uh, click the brush here and so adding detail is really easy with this texture painting. To change some of the overall material properties you can click this button in the top right corner and you can see that there are more settings for the material like the normal strength so in the end let me show you how baking works so go down here open the baking tab and go to export and here you can select the resolution for the output textures how many baking samples to use and what textures to export and then click on export maps so the export is complete and you can change the save location for the export here in the settings for the layer painter so this was it this add-on is really helpful with the PBR workflow uh, there is a complete documentation guide available uh, for which I will leave a link in the description below. If you have any comments or questions, please write them in the comments. And just a reminder in the end, you can get this add-on for 25% off on Blender Market just for this week. Until next time, goodbye.